Today is Wednesday, September 22nd. My name is Sharon Alterman, and I'm here at the Jewish Federation interviewing Herbert Kaufman for the Leonard N. Simons Oral History Project. Mr. Kaufman, do we have your permission to use the contents of this interview in any kind of historic documentation? You certainly do. Thank you. Well, I have to start off saying I'm delighted to interview you. You are one of the people in this community who has made such an impact on this community, and I know that this is going to be a very interesting interview. Thank you, dear. And let's start at the very beginning. Where were you born and when? I was born here in Detroit, uh, April 1924. I just celebrated my 80th birthday in April, and I'm thrilled and pleased to still be enjoying and doing everything I'm doing. Mazel tov to you. Thank you. And who were your parents and where did they come from? Uh, my father was Ira Kaufman. He was born in uh, Europe, in uh, uh, Austria, Poland, actually in Galicia. He, uh, he was born there in 1896. He came to America in 1907. Uh, he was a young person, age 11 at the time. Uh, came over here and uh, started working early in life. Uh, he sold matches, he delivered milk, uh, then later in life he opened a hardware store, uh, and then later after that he opened a funeral home in 1940. And uh, this is how I gravitated into the business that I'm in. My mother was born in Michigan, uh, just outside the Thumb area. She was born the same year, 1896. Uh, and interestingly enough, when uh, my mother and father got married, uh, it was almost like an intermarriage. My father from Galicia, my mother's family from Lit uh, Lithuania, <laughs> it was like the uh, 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 intermarriage that they're talking about today. Uh, my mother and dad uh, lived in Detroit uh, in this area all of their lives. My dad, my mother died in 1955. My father died in uh, 1986. And uh, what area did you live in when you were a, sm uh, a small child? When I was first, uh, I lived on the east side of Detroit on uh, Gratiot and Iroquois. My father had a hardware store there. Uh, and we lived there until 1936, uh, at which time we moved to uh, the west side. We b lived on Virginia Park between Byron and Woodrow Wilson. Uh, I attended. I think the primary reason that my mother and dad moved was wanted to bring uh, myself and my two siblings uh, more into a Jewish community. Uh, I attended Hutchins uh, Intermediate School and graduated from Northern High School. And can you tell us about your family life in those early formative years? What are your recollections? My earlier years, I don't remember a great deal. Uh, when we moved to the west side, uh, we had a very, very close-knit family, and I had a loving aunt and uncle uh, that uh, lived upstairs from us that we were very, very close to through the years. Uh, I have two sisters. My older sister, uh, Jean, uh, is two years older than I am, but interestingly, when she passed the age of 70, she automatically became <laughs> my younger sister. Uh, she presently lives in Arizona uh, and is married to, uh, uh, has been married now for 62 years, married to Jerry Sutcher. Uh, my younger sister, Charlotte Feldman, uh, married to Nate Feldman, uh, lived here all of their lives, but about two months ago moved to Washington, D.C. area because they have two daughters living there. And I think our family is most unique. As I mentioned, my older sister has been married 62 years, uh, Babs and myself 56 years, and my kid sister 52 years. That's really longevity. Yes. Maybe we were too chicken earlier to get a divorce. <laughs> or smart. <laughs> if, uh, or smart. If uh, divorce had been socially acceptable, uh, through the adjustment of the first couple of years, uh, and I think this is one thing that's wrong in the world today, young people, uh, when they have a disagreement, uh, just dissolve their marriage. And thank goodness we didn't. Uh, you talked about going to Hutchins Junior High and, North and Northern. Northern. And what, were you active as a young person in sports? And I was in the, the Boy Scouts. Uh, I recall, and I also ran track. That was the extent of my, I uh, uh, ran track at Northern uh, and did reasonably well at it. I ran a half mile. Did you go to the Jewish Community Center 
in that uh, area. Absolutely, on Woodward and Holbrook, uh, that uh, then became the John Cronk uh, Community Center. Yes, I did go there. And I played, if I recall correctly, some racket sports. Do you, do you have any recollections of what the activities were at the Jewish Community Center? in those days? Were there clubs and social groups? There were clubs and social group. I was not involved in them. Uh, from the uh, uh, present Jewish Community Center, I see all of the activity there, and there's much more activity at the uh, Jewish centers now than there was then. Uh, but uh, at that time, the Jewish community was centered much more so in the area of uh, the uh, uh, Jewish Center there, and it brought a lot more people there. Was Northern High School primarily Jewish? Uh, no, it was uh, at that time probably 50% uh, uh, white students of which a big percentage were uh, uh, Jewish and there was a very, very uh, heavy black population at that time. And I think it taught me a great deal. It taught me that people are people and I had a lot of friends, uh, uh, both Christian and black, uh, that uh, taught me a lot more tolerance in this world. So there was, it was an integrated? Very much so, very much so. And what about your religious education at that time? Uh, my dad w had been very, very active at Shard Sedic for many, many years. Uh, and uh, I used to go to Shard Sedic. I went through uh, um, um, Hebrew Day School, Hebrew Day. Uh, uh, what was the uh, Hebrew? Uh, yeshiva? Uh, no, not Yeshiva, oh, okay. not Yeshiva. It was at Philadelphia and Byron. Uh, uh, I attended there for a while. I recall that. And uh, I had my bar mitzvah at Shard Sedek, uh, and uh, I had a second bar mitzvah on my 73rd birthday, and the Lord willing, I'm going to have a third one on my 83rd oh, birthday. Oh, how wonderful. Uh -huh. And uh, so the religious practice in your home was pretty conservative? Uh, yes, yes. Uh -huh. uh, we observed, uh, we used to have Friday night dinners regularly, uh, and uh, uh, I didn't attend services a great deal as a youngster. Uh, but my father went every Sabbath. And what was your mother's level of religious practice? Uh, following with my dad, didn't attend services a great deal. Uh, my dad came from a much more traditional family than my mother did. And at this point in time, how many synagogues do you belong to? Uh, I belong to a number, but for a different reason for each one. My primary affiliation is Temple Bethel. I'm a past president of Temple Bethel. Uh, I also belong to Shard Sedek. Uh, as I mentioned, my father was very, very active there, and when he died, uh, I felt it important for Kaufman to be a member of Shard Sedek at all times, which I, and I have joined uh, several other congregations, but each for specific reasons and purposes. Let's go back and talk a little bit more about your father. You talked about the various businesses that he was in, and how did he eventually get into um, the uh, mortuary science? Uh, Dad had a hardware store on, uh, as I mentioned, on Gratiot and Iroquois, and two blocks down the street was a Christian funeral home, the Los Gitry, and upon, my father has related this to me several times, upon two different occasions, Dad and DeLoss attended Jewish funerals at uh, uh, Lewis Brothers Funeral Home, which was the primary funeral home at the time, and my father, with his wonderful way with people and wonderful way of putting people at ease. Uh, DeLoss said to him, Ira, this community needs somebody of your background, of your compassion, uh, of your uh, uh, upbringing to open a Jewish funeral home. And uh, Dad gave great thought to it, uh, and he went to night school, got his license as a funeral director, and served an apprenticeship with uh, DeLoss. Uh, and in 19... 39, he went to work for uh, Hebrew Memorial Chesed Shalemis, and he was their licensed funeral director there for, I believe, about two years and opened his own funeral home in uh, 1940 or 41. The uh, funeral home was uh, in Detroit at Dexter and Edison, uh, and uh, it remained there uh, until I came back into the business uh, in 1956. I had been with Dad after I graduated uh, uh, from college uh, and feeling that there was a perfect job somewhere, I left Dad seeking that job and grew up, matured, 
came back into the business walking in my own footsteps rather than his and realizing that I was perfectly suited for a funeral service. And uh, yes, there were some uh, difficulties. Uh, no business is perfect, uh, which I learned having left him for a while. And I'll forever be thankful that I did leave, but I'll be more thankful that I came back because it's uh, been a wonderful, wonderful life for me. So is the community thankful for you Thank and your you. decision? I think it's taught me the business that I've been in has taught me to value life. And I think this is the reason that I enjoy life as much as I do. Everybody has problems. Everybody has bumps in the road. And Lord only knows I've had my share, uh, but uh, it's a wonderful world to live in and a wonderful life. And I defy anybody to have a better uh, life and working relationship than I do with my wife. Let's, let's go back to some of the other things that happened to you before we got, uh, you came into the funeral business. You talked about going to uh, the university. Where was that? Uh, I uh, graduated Northern High School in 1942. Uh, uh, went to University of Michigan. Uh, Uncle Sam drafted me uh, in February of 1943. I spent three years in the Army. Uh, went through basic training uh, in Florida uh, and uh, while waiting to be shipped out somewhere, who knows where, uh, I was doing KP duty so much that I volunteered to do uh, uh, work out with uh, uh, the different soldiers there and I ended up uh, taking uh, the young soldiers to the beach for swimming and for exercising. I spent time there. Uh, I was then transferred to uh, University of Chicago in a meteorology program and I was there for six or eight months when the program was disbanded. Uh, I then, if I recall correctly, went to Aberdeen, Maryland uh, for electronics school and I was being trained uh, in electronics uh, for ground uh, control of bombing. Uh, spent some time there uh, and um, at a later date I was prepared to go to Europe uh, for uh, uh, overseas duty when VE Day was declared and at a later time I was on my way to Seattle uh, to go to the Pacific when VJ Day was declared. The only service I had out of the country was at an RAF base in Ontario which was two, two and a half hours away from Detroit which gave me an opportunity to sneak home once a month <laughs> uh, and also to get overseas pay. Uh, at the time, I, I have to be honest, I was disappointed I didn't see overseas service. Uh, as I've grown up in this world and I see what's going on today in Iraq, I have to be thankful that I didn't because who knows what might have happened. And I uh, uh, got out of the Army in February of 46, uh, went back to the University of Michigan, and uh, through uh, uh, summer sessions and all, I graduated uh, in uh, uh, the fall of 1947. Uh, went into, started working with my dad in the business, uh, and uh, because I was young and as I had mentioned earlier, thinking there was a perfect business, I left the business for a period of time uh, and uh, uh, moved to Ohio and I was a traveling salesman. I covered the state of Ohio. I sold ladies lingerie, hosiery and gloves. Uh, after a while I got tired of the traveling and uh, after my mother died, my father approached me. He said, uh, son, if you'll come back to, uh, into the business and I certainly have room for you and I'd love to have you here, we'll build a new chapel in Southfield, and this is actually what happened. Uh, I came back in 1956, uh, and uh, the rest has been good history. What were some of the, your fond memories of the University of Michigan? Friends that I made there, and I made a lot of friends, many of them local here. Uh, I had a roommate uh, who uh, I have to look up again shortly uh, from Buffalo, uh, whose father uh, ran the uh, Buffalo Jewish News. Uh, at that time, it was a very fine paper. Uh, and uh, I maintained quite a relationship with uh, Jake over a period of years. Uh, plus, I have many, many friends here in Detroit uh, that uh, I see from time to time that I went to school with in Ann Arbor. Were you also involved with people that were Jews and non-Jews at uh, the university, or did that change? Probably more Jewish than non-Jewish. I was a member of a fraternity, uh, Phi Sigma Delta, uh, which uh, the way the world goes today has been bought out. It's now ZBT. Uh, and uh, I had a lot of friends there and I spent a lot of time with them. 
were you in any leadership roles there? No, and, no. And where did you meet Babs? On a street corner, <laughs> which I don't think you can do today. <laughs> Uh, Babs was going with somebody who her father didn't like and insisted that uh, uh, she would have to go out with somebody else alternately with the young man she was going with. And we had a mutual friend and she and this friend were standing on a street corner and I drove up or uh, I drove up one day and we started talking and she said, do you play bridge? I said, yes. She said, let's play and we've been playing ever <laughs> since. What a nice story. <laughs> yes, yes. And it's actually the true story. And we got married in 1948. And tell me about your family. I have, uh, uh, we had three children. Uh, our son is the oldest. Bud is 54. Uh, he's married. He's a dermatologist. Uh, lives here uh, uh, close to us. Uh, has three children. Uh, Josh, who we visited just this weekend in uh, uh, New York, uh, he lives there. He manages a hedge fund uh, and uh, is doing well. Um, their next child is daughter Carly, who is 23, who just started at Stanford Law School two weeks ago. And Jenna, who lives here, uh, Jenna, who is 16. Um, my daughter Eileen, uh, who is 52, uh, married to Dave Techner. Um, they have three children. Uh, Ari, who is uh, 26, lives in Eugene, Oregon, and uh, manufactures uh, golf clubs uh, and is engaged. Uh, we'll be getting married next year. Uh, their son, Chad, uh, who is in between positions. He was, um, he managed an office in Indiana that he just gave up recently, and he is uh, going out to Oregon to work with his brother, Ari, uh, in the business and see how that works out. And then their youngest child is uh, Stephanie, uh, who is uh, 18 and uh, going on 19, and she's at college in uh, uh, Washington State. Um, our daughter, Patty, uh, unfortunately, Patty died a year and a half ago. She had not been well through the years. Uh, they have one child, uh, Annie, who was adopted. Patty was never able to get pregnant. Uh, and uh, Annie has her bat mitzvah in three weeks. Uh, and uh, uh, my wonderful son-in-law, Otto Duby, is doing a superb job of raising our granddaughter, Annie. You are known as a superb family man. And I know you quite well, and, and I know your background and how you love those grandchildren. Uh, Fortunately. Any messages to people about family life? Well, fortunately, through the years, we've been able, we have wanted to, and we've been able to spend a lot of time with our grandchildren. Uh, for many, many years, Babs and I skied, and we used to take our grandchildren uh, uh, out to Colorado skiing with us, uh, practically never with their parents because that ruined it. Uh, when they were alone with us, uh, it's very seldom we said no, but when we said no, they knew we meant it. Uh, and we had wonderful, wonderful experiences. Uh, we have taken our grandkids on many, many other trips uh, and uh, have, in, have enjoyed them tremendously. And I, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, we just got back from New York um, visiting our grandson, Josh, uh, and looking forward to visiting all of the kids. We're going to make a, we go out to California in the uh, wintertime now. Uh, we gave up skiing about three years ago. Uh, Babs had open heart surgery and we tried skiing thereafter, and uh, it was too difficult for her. So we gave up that sport, and we play golf here in the summer, and we're now uh, playing golf uh, in the winter in Palm Springs area. Uh, we don't spend the whole winter there. So far, we're just going back and forth. We'll go out for three, four weeks and come home for a couple weeks. Uh, and for sure, we will do this uh, until Annie uh, is uh, 16 and is more out of the house and more on her own, but we want to spend as much time with her as we can. And we've been very, very fortunate to be able to enjoy our grandkids as we have. You really enjoy life, and you give a lot back to this community. I know how busy you are with your, your business, but you've also found time to do a lot of other things. Do you want to talk about your leadership in Temple Bethel? Uh, I've been very, very active in Temple Bethel. I was president there uh, about eight years ago, and it was about a 10-year process of uh, being on the board and going through the different chairs uh, and uh, hopefully uh, hopefully I left my mark at Temple 
uh, which uh, uh, I still feel is a very, very fine religious institution. Uh, I do spend a lot of time there. I'm not as active as I used to be, but uh, on the phone uh, and uh, talk with people, I hope that I give a little background and direction to them. Uh, but uh, uh, it's the oldest Jewish congregation in the state of Michigan, founded in 1850, and with lots of history and tradition. What were some of the major things that you did during your term of office, if, if you could talk about something that you, you think really had impact? Is there anything that comes to mind? Well, we were going through certain turmoil at the time. Uh, the rabbi that we had at the time that uh, myself and a few others felt belonged more in academics than in a pulpit position. Uh, we attempted through a period of time to gain enough support in the congregation to uh, replace him. Uh, during my tenure, which was a two-year tenure, uh, it didn't uh, result in his leaving. And the young man who took over from me, uh, at the time when he assumed the position, he said, Herb, I'm going to make it work. And I said, I wish you luck. At the high holiday services, he said, uh, the president always speaks to the congregation at uh, Rosh Hashanah. Uh, he said, great things are happening at Bethel. But then about six weeks later, he came up to me and he said, uh, Herb, you were right, I was wrong. Uh, and uh, this young man who replaced me, John Kamins, did a superb job in a very, very professional way in uh, arranging for the rabbi to be replaced. And uh, I take my hat off to John for the heat that he took in the professional way that he handled it. Uh, unfortunately, while I was president, there was a great deal of turmoil uh, at uh, Temple. Uh, and uh, it sort of stood in the way of accomplishing other things. Uh, but at the, when uh, the rabbi was replaced, Rabbi Danny Syme was brought in, uh, and, and thank goodness is still with us and is doing a superb job. So you were in a leader posi leadership position in a very difficult time. Yes, then. yes. And what other organizations have you left your mark on? Uh, I'm smiling when you say that. Uh, I am founding co-chairman because of uh, the young lady who is sitting opposite <laughs> me, Sharon Alterman, uh, in the uh, Quarter Century Club of Jewish Federation of Metropolitan Detroit. Uh, I co-chaired it with uh, um, uh, Jesse. Jesse Stern. <laughs> I spoke to Jesse yesterday, you know, human, human memory at times slips you. Uh, Jesse and I uh, are wonderful, wonderful friends today, and I think that this is what brought uh, Jesse and myself and Sharon together, uh, working together. Um, Quarter Century Club uh, was and basically still is an organization to thank people in the community for having uh, supported Federation at any level for 25 years or more. Uh, we put on programs. Uh, there was no fundraising, no soliciting. Uh, at these programs, but it was just a way of thanking uh, people in the uh, community for the support of Federation. Uh, I've been very active in State of Israel Bonds, um, and uh, I presently am on the Executive Committee for State of Israel Bonds for State of Michigan. Previously, I had been active in Jewish National Fund, um, and uh, unfortunately, JNF has moved out of Detroit. There is no office here anymore. Um, Within my profession, I was very, very active. I'm a past president of the Jewish Funeral Directors of America that represents all of the Jewish funeral homes in the United States, which is about 100, there are about 130 Jewish funeral homes in the United States. Uh, unfortunately, uh, major conglomerates have bought out a great many of them. Uh, thank goodness we are still uh, family owned and family directed here in Detroit. There aren't a lot of the major Jewish funeral homes that are still family owned. Uh, but fortunately, I have two sons-in-law working with me uh, and uh, it's worked out extremely well. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, we will stay private and family owned forever. Uh, the community's been too good to us uh, for us not to be here for them. And I have found when the conglomerates have bought the businesses out, they're more interested in the bottom line mm -hmm. than in serving people. And it's hurt, it's hurt our industry greatly. You talked about Israel and your connection through Israel bonds. Have you spent a lot of time in Israel? 
I've been to Israel seven or eight times, and each trip is more inspiring and more exciting. Uh, Babs has gone with me on every trip except the last one. And last trip uh, was a five-day trip. Uh, it was a year ago, I think in January or February, something of that sort. And um, we were leaving on a Sunday, coming back on a Friday, and I was going alone, and I heard that the young new rabbi at Shard Sedek, Rabbi Joey Krakoff, uh, was going without his wife, and I knew him, and it gave me a great opportunity. Uh, I called him and I said, why don't we share a room together, and which we did. Uh, and it uh, uh, created a wonderful, wonderful relationship between Joey and myself that uh, we retain today. That was one of the things that I wanted to, to speak to you about, your perspective on this Jewish community. And you just talked about Rabbi Krakow and how you bonded with him, but I think that you, among anybody in this community, has the perspective and the ability to see what's going on in, at least in the Reform and Conservative Ours is the greatest Jewish community in the entire United States. As I mentioned, I was active in our national association. I saw what goes on in every other community. None of them can hold a candle to uh, Detroit. Not just the amount of money that we raise, and we raise uh, in excess of $30 million for a population of 90-some-odd thousand uh, Jewish people. If uh, other major communities came anywhere near this level, uh, there'd uh, uh, so much more could be done. But in addition to the money, uh, our community has raised so many national and international leaders. And I used to think that uh, uh, our generation was active in doing things. What's going to happen with succeeding generations? I think every generation following us has stepped up to the plate and uh, uh, is very, very active in supporting Federation and everything else in our community. Uh, I stand proud and I constantly tell people uh, what our community accomplishes. In the years that you've been with um, Kaufman's, have you seen changes in the way uh, the, the community relates to each other, the various factions? Is there more cohesiveness? Or? I think that there is uh, a closer relationship uh, between uh, each of the different uh, denominations of Judaism. Uh, I think that, uh, well, I can s personally speak, I think it's very, very important for us to have an Orthodox community. I'm not active in the Orthodox community, uh, but uh, uh, I think that the Orthodox community is important for us to keep us going in the proper direction that we're going. Uh, I think the relationship between conservative and reform uh, has become much, much closer. Uh, reform uh, congregations are becoming more traditional and conservative are becoming more reform. And uh, other than a few major issues between the two, if it weren't for those uh, issues such as patrilineal, matrilineal, uh, um, heritage of people, uh, being Jewish, uh, and certain other things, I would imagine uh, that the two different groups could get together, but it'll never happen because of those problems and because of uh, uh, political reasons between them. Uh, but uh, uh, the congregations we have here in Detroit, the Reform, the Conservative, uh, the smaller Orthodox groups, uh, gives us the strength that I don't think other communities have as much as we do. We have attracted so many young uh, clergy people to our community uh, that is very, very attractive to young families. And uh, each time we turn around, there are more young clergy people, uh, rabbis and cantors coming to Detroit, which thrills me. I think we can be very proud of who we are and what we do. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, it's interesting, Shard Sedek, uh, congregation of uh, 15 to 1800 families, has three rabbis. Uh, Rabbi Groner uh, became emeritus just recently, uh, but the three rabbis they have, Rabbi Joey Krakoff is 34 years of age, uh, Jonathan Birkin is 32, and the young rabbi that just came in is age 30. Imagine average age of 30, uh, I'm sorry, 32, for the three rabbis of a major, major congregation. And each of our conservative congregations has wonderful leadership, as does uh, all of our reform. Well, that's very telling that we're yes. willing to take the And I think, I think that we have uh, a higher percentage 
of uh, membership of our Jewish community, still a disappointing uh, number, probably only 50% of our community is affiliated, but I think that's a bigger percentage than many other uh, major, major communities have. You talked about your involvement, but I know that Babs also is a very dedicated member of this community. What are some of the things that she's done? Uh, Babs, in particular, was very, very active in the Meals on Wheels program of National Council of Jewish Women. Uh, she, for many, many years, uh, she was uh, uh, Friday Day Chairman, and then she became overall chairman. Uh, she started with uh, Meals on Wheels when I think they had 30-some-odd uh, clients that they uh, uh, sent meals to, two meals a day, five days a week. Uh, they got up to over 200. Uh, she hasn't been involved in that for uh, some time, uh, but uh, she put in probably 20, 25 years. Uh, she's been very, very active through the years with, uh, with our grandchildren, spending a lot of time there, and more importantly, giving her husband a wonderful, wonderful life. It's a fine tribute. <laughs> Are there some things that you'd like to say to young people if they are to hear this tape? Some of your life philosophy? Yes. The glass is half full always. It's not half empty. Uh, this is a saying I've said for years. Uh, also, uh, I might have said this earlier in the interview, with all the bumps in the road, life here is still wonderful. Take everything with you that you can and enjoy it and be part of it and realize that there, not everything is perfect and there will be bumps in the road. Uh, I can't help but feel that uh, uh, this is the best world that I'll ever live in and I'm going to hang on to as long as I can. Uh, the Lord willing, I'll live the proverbial 120 years and that's what I'm shooting for. Let's hope so. <laughs> I live and I enjoy and I'm busy all the time. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that we should talk about? Let me say, let me say a few things about my father, my father-in-law, and my wife. My father was a very soft, gentle person, uh, made friends easily, uh, had a very compassionate way about him, and I think that this is part of the reason that he became, uh, and his love of Judaism, and I think that this was an important part of his getting into the profession that he did and being successful at it. And I know my father left for me what really matters, a name and a reputation. Uh, and this is something that we strive hard to hang on to. And thank goodness, with my two sons-in-law, we're able to do it. My father-in-law gave me something else that's different. By his own example, he always sought out younger friends which Babs and I have done, and let me tell you, it's kept us younger and younger and younger. We live, we enjoy, we do a lot of things. Uh, now for the best part of my life, my relationship with my wife. I don't think there's anybody that has a better relationship than the two of us do. I don't think anybody enjoys life or each other. Yes, in any mature relationship there are disagreements, uh, and this is part of living in a world together. Uh, but. Uh, you know that when you make a contract with somebody and it's the right contract, you work at it, you enjoy at it, and this is exactly what we do. We both work hard, but we play hard. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, we used to do a lot of skiing, now we do a lot of golf. When I'm here in Detroit, I will work full time, uh, but uh, I will continue to take time off through the winter and uh, go back and forth to uh, uh, California. Is that your message, keep working? Absolutely. Uh, I think that I, I'm amazed that I can go out to California and relax as I do and be happy and be comfortable. Uh, I spend a lot of time on the computer out there, which I enjoy. Uh, I call my office every day while I'm out there. I know so many people in the community and my office faxes to me information on each of the funerals that we have and I attempt to call every family. Uh, while I'm out there, let them know that I'm thinking of them, make sure everything went smoothly. And it keeps me involved and keeps, keeps me busy and keeps me active. Uh, we have friends out there that we spend time with and we do play a lot of golf. Uh, but uh, what I really enjoy out there is the fact that Babs and I are able to relax and be with each other. Here in Detroit, 
Uh, I am busy so much of the time during the day in business, uh, during the night uh, with uh, involvements and social activities and meetings, things of that sort. And uh, it's so refreshing being out in California and just the two of us and uh, totally relaxing and enjoying. Thank you. This has been a wonderful discussion. And I enjoyed I, it. I appreciate your uh -huh. coming. I hope I covered what you wanted. Yes, you did. Uh-huh. Good. Thank you. Sharon, we love you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>